When I say Frost villain, what is the first thing you come up with? Apart from Elsa from Frozen. To me, it's the iconic super villains Captain Cold and Mr. Freeze. These supervillains doesn't exactly have superpowers, however they both yield an ice gun, or gun that shoots ice. Or does it? How exactly does an ice gun work, and what's the difference between Captain Cold's ice gun and Mr. Freeze's ice gun? Well, let's take a closer look. Just to avoid confusion, I'm going to be basing my scientific analysis of these two characters off of The Flash from the CB and Arnold Schwarzenegger's, you know, Batman Returns or whatever it was called. Yeah, that one. Stay cool, bird boy. Talk about your cold shoulder. You are not sending me to the cooler. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Ugh, so dumb. Simply by observing the two characters, we see that their uh, ice guns are vastly different. Mr. Freeze's ice gun seems to physically throw ice wherever it aims, or create ice out of thin air. But Captain Cold, however, we get an explanation for by Cisco. Why? Because speed and cold are opposites. Temperature is measured by how quickly the atoms of something are oscillating. The faster they are, the hotter it is. And when things are cold, they're slower on the atomic level. When there's no movement at all, it's called absolute zero. Captain Cold's ice gun seems to cool down whatever it aims at to negative 273 Celsius. I think that was correct. Let's talk about Mr. Freeze's ice gun. So, when you think about it, the fact that Mr. Freeze throws ice where he aims, or the fact that he somehow creates ice out of thin air is ridiculous. How I figured this out is going to take a little while to explain, so uh, stay tuned even though it might get boring, depending on if you like, like you know, physics and chemistry and so on. First, what you need to know is that the state of water, you know, solid, gas or liquid, really is just dependent of two things, temperature and air density. Air density is really just how close or dense the air around you is. So if it's really high density, it means that the air molecules are really close to each other. But if it's a low density, the air molecules are really far away from each other. How dense something is has to do with gravity. You see, everything that has mass pulls everything towards itself. Just really, really slowly if it's really small. But in large things like the Earth, Molecules are going to be gathering the most in the middle, meaning that everything is going to be the densest there. If you've ever been in a room filled with people before, you know what I'm talking about. Like, in the middle, it's filled with people and you barely can move, but if you go to the edges of the room, you can move as free as you want to. The lower out in the atmosphere you get, the lower density it is. So at the edge of the atmosphere, it is really low density and really cold. But close to the Earth, you know, about sea level, it is okay density and okay temperature. While at the core of the Earth, it is really hot and really, really dense. It, stone even melts at that point. As you can see in this clip, this man puts water in the syringe and covers up the tip. He then pulls back the syringe and the density in the syringe gets low. The water boils but keeps the same temperature it had in the first place. Now we get into how Mr. Freeze's ice gun would work. Mr. Freeze could keep water inside of his gun 
cold at all time, but under very low density, so that the water won't freeze, but stay in its liquid form. It, he could then push it out, the water would still have its own temperature, but freeze inside the ordinary density atmosphere. Now we get over to Captain Cold's ice gun. You see, there's a difference. While Mr. Freeze's ice gun creates ice where it throws or shoots or whatever you want to call it, Captain Cold cools down stuff to negative 273 degrees Celsius. But why exactly that temperature? Well, first, what is temperature? Temperature is when the atoms in the air move, and according to the Heinz uncertainty principle, an atom must always be in movement, even just a little bit. If an atom doesn't move, it must have a temperature of negative 273 Celsius. But atoms can't reach this temperature. They have to be in some movement. This temperature is unachievable, like uh, moving at the speed of light, or the rolling and icing, getting a six. It's just, it just doesn't happen. However, we can come close. Scientists have managed to find a way to make matter cool down to one billionth of a degree away from absolute zero. One billionth. How they do that, I, I still don't quite understand, but they use some wibbly wobbly coldy wimey stuff. When matter reaches this temperature, it, they enter a new state of matter called Bose Einstein condensate. From now on, we'll just call it Beck, because it's easier to say. In Bose Einstein condensate, matter isn't real anymore. There's no such thing as an atom, or an electron, or a neutrino, or a neutron. I don't really know the difference. And an electron. There's no such thing. Did I say electron twice? I think I did. They, they don't have a shape anymore. They all become liquid, sort of. So, let's say you have a bucket of ice cubes. When these ice cubes melt, they are not their own particles, or well, their own cubes anymore. They are just water, lots of water inside a bucket that once were filled with ice cubes, but now is now filled with water. That's sort of what happens at both Einstein condensate, which is surprisingly similar to another state of matter called plasma, where the atoms, well, they keep their shape, but they are a little bit the same way. Plasma is when the electrons that swirl around the atom core doesn't anymore do that what they do. They just tear itself apart from the atom and just go and do whatever they want. This is kind of similar to the Bose-Einstein condensate back as I said before. They behave the same way and they move the same way. If we have a look at what comes out of the cold gun of Captain Cold, we see that it has some similarities to plasma. Uh, like a lightsaber. I like to think of a lightsaber as plasma. And it's some sort of substance. I'm not sure what it is. Like a white flame. But it's not hot. It's cold. My theory is therefore that Captain Cold's gun shoots out Bose Einstein condensate Beck, that is somewhat similar to plasma and that this cools down the flash instead of, you know, heat him up. Okay, I know there are some issues with this, like the fact that we can't actually get both Einstein condensate to be in ordinary air, and uh, no one has ever seen it before, and we can only have it in tiny amounts, but get me some slack, it's the best I could come up with. Unless you have something yourself, in which case I would seriously, seriously love to hear from you in the comment section. Go and comment. Do, do it. Do it. You clicked on this video for a reason. Probably because you like overanalyzing science and geeky stuff. In which case, my channel is perfect for you because I love analyzing this sort of things. Overanalyzing, figure out, figuring out new science. I love that. So go check out my channel. It's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. Don't forget to vote for your favorite element in the monthly element contest down in the comment section under the hashtag element of the month. Who knows, maybe your favorite element will be the next element of the month. The real issue with these ice guns is their size. Think about it, Mr. Freeze needs at least a fridge worth of space to keep his water in, and those Einstein condensators usually take up a lab worth of space, so Cisco would have to 
revolutionized both particle physics and ele electroengineering overnight. I, I mean, I know he's a good electroengineer, but nobody does that. Yep. <laughs>